thank you very much for an opportunity and thank you once again for availing yourself. A very good morning to the members of the Executive Council, our DG, HODs, and of course all media personnel in our midst. We have requested your presence uh, today uh, because we've got uh, quite an important uh, a message that we want to relay to the people of Mpumalanga as the executive government of Mpumalanga. And um, once again, we really appreciate your presence as usual. As and when we need you to come through, you always avail yourself. And uh, in that regard, we want to thank you once again for availing yourself in this important briefing. Now, as a point of departure, I would like to emphasize the primary function of the executive component of the provincial government that I lead, that of developing an environment that is conducive to the realization of the ideals as enshrined in our constitution, which amongst others entails the following building a society based on democratic values and social justice, ensuring that government is based on the will of people and that every citizen is equally protected by law, and lastly, improving the quality of life of all people who call the province of the rising sun their home. Our work and delivery of basic services to the people of Mpumalama, it is firmly rooted on these ideas. We are also tasked with enormous responsibility of recalibrating our economy and that of providing relief to those most vulnerable following the unprecedented impact of COVID-19 on the provincial fiscals. In order for us to be equal to the task that lies ahead of us, it is therefore imperative that we constitute an executive component of our government with leaders who are alive to the realities faced by the majority of our people in this province. And I believe that the executive that I lead must be constituted by men and women who will discharge their responsibilities and encumbered by major distractions and deficiencies that may diminish their focus and our obligation to the people of Mpumalanga. To this effect, I have re requested your presence to announce the appointment of the new member of the Executive Council to fill the vacancy that has existed in the executive following the release of the erstwhile member of the executive council for agriculture, rural development, land and environmental affairs. With effect from today, Mr. Mandra Hedni Ndlovu shall join the executive component of the provincial government as a member of the executive council who is responsible for cooperative governance and traditional affairs. This decision is partly informed by the briefing I received last week from the Auditor General on the overall 2020-2021 MFMA audit outcomes for municipalities in Pumala. My key takeaway from the meeting is that Whilst we continue to record gradual improvement year on year in terms of audit performance, the results of the recent local government election and service delivery related issues that bedeviled most municipalities and joins upon us the responsibility to make changes that will aid us in improving municipal audit performance removing operational bottlenecks <coughs> to improve efficiency of service delivery and most importantly position, positioning municipalities as key nodes of economic development through the implementation of effective framework that promote intergovernmental cooperation through the district development model. Having worked quite extensively with the 
Over the last couple of years, I am certain that his familiarity with the wide array of challenges we face in the local sphere of government, as well as his natural ability to be analytical and solution driven, will aid our efforts to operate in a coordinated and a, a much more integrated manner with the local sphere of government. I have also made a decision to appoint the acting MEC Busi Shiva to the portfolio of agriculture, rural development, land and environmental affairs. MEC Shiva has excelled in managing the portfolios of copper <coughs> and that year for the last eight months. MEC Shiva's strategic oversight has strengthened the stability of the department. The stability of the agricultural sector, which is the key component of the Pumalanga economic recovery and reconstruction plan, is of paramount importance in order to ensure food security for the province and the nation. During her tenure, MEC Shiva has also championed the integration of women-owned enterprises in our agricultural value chain system. I wish to thank MBC Shiva for valiantly overseeing the successful functioning of two departments during difficult period. Ladies and gentlemen of media, as I have indicated earlier, the changes I have effected to the composition of the Executive Council will improve the delivery of services and ultimately deepen the confidence of the masses of our people in their elected representatives and ultimately their government, which will then ultimately be the government that is co-governed with the communities. Government that will be able to reflect the face of our communities. Having said that, I want to take this opportunity once more for making yourself available to receive this briefing on behalf of the community of Mpumalanga. I thank you so much. You, you go, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, sorry, sir. Just to check, uh, uh, in, in these changes that you have, uh, I mean, uh, the filling in of the department, uh, have you checked into performance of the other departments, uh, the likes of public works, uh, other th including okay, its own the copter that you are putting, Mr. Mr. B. One, uh, we've got problems in the municipalities. Uh, performances, performance-wise, is Miss Shiba being removed because she performed bad in copter uh, because she has been there. Uh, just to check on that. Right, thank you very much. Perhaps you can add another question to any. In the absence of any, then that would probably be the last question. Well, certainly from time to time, we will do an assessment of and take stock of the work that has been done and throughout the respective department. And of course, that would be in line with the mandate that we are carrying from the organization that we are serving, which is quite explicit, explicit in terms of the implementable and the deliverables, will then, which will then inform the program of government in a strategic medium term strategic framework, which will be implemented by prospective department. And therefore, the role of MECs in that regard is to make sure that they oversee and ensure the implementation of government priorities and objectives as set out in their respective uh, strategic medium-term objectives and on annual, which will then be broken down on annual basis. And therefore, they've got a mammoth task of overseeing that. And over and above that, what is expected of them how are the finances of 
respective department being spent? Are they being spent prudently in line with the priorities as set out within the APPs and the five-year plan of the departments? And there are measures and tools that we are with put in place to make sure that there's constant monitoring almost on, on a monthly basis through the IYMs to make sure that uh, this expenditure is in line with the priorities. So those are amongst the issues, that are amongst the other things that we would be looking at in ensuring that indeed government is moving towards a right direction. Yes. We have looked at the performance of all the respective embassies accordingly. Now, coming back to the issue of Umamshi, for having been moved, obviously, I have said it mouthfully. She's a, has excel, she's one of the best embassies that I have. I must acknowledge that. I've got full confidence and trust in her, how she executes herself, her stature, you know, it, 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 tell, it speaks volume and the level of commitment in which she has in her way. So it goes without saying that if there is an opportunity being given, you know, when I ask her, I want her for cooperative governance matters, she's available. When I ask her for DADLA-related issues, she will be available. She won't say at no point within these eight months where she said, hey, but I'm overwhelmed. I can't do this because I'm, you know, those are men and women, the caliber that you are looking at to work with, that you'll always be looking forward to do that. Hence, in my view, she has done exceptionally well in executing all departments that she was leading. She has never been an absent person. Anywhere you want her, everywhere, she is a very big boy. And then we appreciate and we commend that there are initiatives as well that she even came with in the department of that year, within the short space of time where she, when she was in there. So we really commend such efforts. And uh, unfortunately, they can't go unnoticed. And therefore, of course, having moved her in Copta, would it still have loved her because she was doing exceptionally well even in Copta. But understanding uh, the strength of uh, MEC, or oh, not yet. <laughs> uh, I've worked with him, and you know, in his capacity outside the government there. And I'm happy that with his insight, uh, things that I used to share with him and discuss, hey, valalang, valalana, in it, he will see them alive. Hence, when I looked, and then I could not look anywhere further than where I know very well that he has taken keen interest. He has always been on the sideline, a participant in those processes. For me, therefore, taking him towards the truth, um, I know that I want better because of he's always been indebted with the issues as they are contained contained in that sphere of uh, government. Therefore, it would be much more easier for us to steer the ship uh, towards the right direction. So he is quite well versed with the issues that he sees with within the local sphere of government. And hence, the rationale behind our appointment, my appointment. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Is yeah. it a follow-up oh, question? Yeah, just to say, He's your boss political and you are his boss uh, administrative. Are you going to be able to balance the relations? Well, I'm the boss, yeah. yeah. And uh, he is an MEC deployed to execute the work of uh, government in that. He reports to me, yes. And uh, elsewhere, we work together. He is the boss, and uh, I'm also equally liable to report on certain matters. But uh, as I'm saying, from where I am, I'm very much comfortable <laughs> and relaxed because we've been doing this, and you know, it's not a stranger. He's no stranger to me. 
There's nothing that I know he doesn't know. There's nothing that he knows I don't know. The relationship has always been very good up to this far. So to me, I'm not bothered by anything. There'll never be a level whereby someone feels like he's a boss to somebody else. What enjoys us the most is to make sure that we better the lives of the people of Mpumalanga. That is what preoccupies our minds, and that has always been a pre-objective, I mean a major objective uh, that we always sought to achieve. And I'm very happy that today he is here, so that whatever we have started together, we must see the race together, we finish the race together. So it's just, a, to me it's just business as usual. So it's very much easier and very comforting. There's nothing I miss, not at all. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier. I think that the change is a script. I don't know what was a script for. But with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I see we don't have uh, any questions. Uh, may I take the opportunity to appreciate your your, your, your contributions and also uh, the input that you've made in terms of your questions. I think the next step now will be guided by the Premier as to uh, what then do we do. You will know after the uh, presentation by the Premier then there will be another step, but uh, it's uh, for the Premier then to guide us. Over to you, Honorable Premier. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if we don't have any further questions, uh, we will be taking Wabundu for a story, story in just now. The judge president is already here. And yes, if you want to witness uh, that moment, you are more than welcome to do so. And uh, I will then be inviting judge president uh, to take over uh, the proceedings from here. Thank you very much once again. And I'm going to ask the candidate to stand up so that we can proceed with the survey. I am going to read the oath, and uh, you should read after me. Okay. This, uh, just, just before that, this is the administering of an oath in terms of Schedule 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. I, Manda Petnindovu, I, Manda Petnindovu, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa, and will obey, respect, and uphold the Constitution. And will obey, respect, and uphold the Constitution. And all other law of the Republic. And all other law of the Republic. And I undertake to hold my office as a member of the Executive Council of the Province of Mpumalanga. And I undertake to hold my office as a member of the Executive Council of the Province of Mpumalanga with honor and dignity, with honor and dignity, to be a true and faithful counselor, to be a true and faithful counselor, not to divulge directly or indirectly any secret matter entrusted to me not to divulge directly or indirectly any secret matter entrusted to me and to perform the functions of my office conscientiously and to the best of my ability and to perform the functions of my office consciously and to the best of my ability please raise up your right hand and say so help me god so help me god Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to sign here as well. Just some few remarks before you take your seat, honorable member. Today, you have made an undertaking to the people of South Africa. What has just happened is not just a pure ceremonial event or ritual event. It is an undertaking that you have made to the people of South Africa and whatever you are going to do today, you are going to be, from today, you are going to be judged by the undertaking that you have made. And the beauty for me about it is that I know you as a youngster and, and, and that gives me comfort that you will take this undertaking which you have made very seriously and we wish you all for the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, JP. Likewise, um, we thank you for the words of wisdom that you always um, share with the members of the executive as and when they are sold into office. Uh, we really appreciate your presence and uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the business of today, it ends here just now and then um, you are welcome honorable MEC for cooperative governance. This is the executive firm of Mpumalanga that you also know very well. And of course, uh, we have a session where we take you through on board as to how far are we with issues. We have made arrangements in that regard, DG, that uh, you must be ushered in to the office uh, very seamlessly and ensure that uh, everything has since been arranged in that regard. H.U. Dimbovu, you are here. You will then walk the MEC to his office.